The Lord be with you. Welcome to worship. Tonight we'll be using order of service number one. It's on the pink sheet. And we begin with hymn 783. Please stand for singing. secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But, but if, if we, we confess, confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess, confess that we are in bondage to sin and, and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us. Renew us and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you and for his sake. God forgives you all your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Amen. Holy is the Lord, the Almighty. He was, he is, and he is to come. He is worthy of glory and honor and power. He created all things. By his will they came to be. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain. Worthy to take the scroll 
and break its seals. By his blood he purchased for God people of every race and time, of every folk and nation, Christ made of them a kingdom, and priests to serve our God, and they shall reign on earth forever. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Please be seated. Our Old Testament reading is from Psalm 31, verses 14 through 18. But I trust in you, O Lord. I say, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from my persecutors. Make your face shine on your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. O Lord, let me not be put to shame, for I call upon you. Let the wicked be put to shame. Let them go silently to Sheol. Let the lying lips be mute, which speak insolently against the righteous in pride and contempt. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Our epistle lesson from Paul's letter to the Ephesians chapter 5. Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time, because the days are evil. Therefore do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart, giving thanks, always and for everything, to God the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, thanks be to God. God.
The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 10th chapter, verses 38 through 42. Now as they went on their way, Jesus entered a village, and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. But Martha was distracted with much serving, and she went up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things. But one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion, which will not be taken away from her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Our hymn of the day is number 733. Sure, who came up with that statistic, but 
It looked legitimate to me. We will spend an equivalent of a few months of our lives opening junk mail. We'll spend months at meetings and months waiting in lines over the course of our life. Why is it that the busier we are, the more important we think we are to other people? Somehow we've deceived ourselves into believing that we need to be so busy that if we're unavailable, it's a sign of our success, of our importance. Of all the gifts that God has given to us, time is one of the most valuable ones that we have. We each have a gift of time, a trust from Him, an investment from Him, to serve Him, and to use that in loving Him and serving others. God created the gift of time. In Genesis 1-5, we read, And there was evening and there was morning, the first day. God was creating time. And he still rules over time. He's given us 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Every hour that he gives to us is to be used to honor him with our lives by the way we use the gift of our time. When we recognize the value of time, we use it to serve our Lord and each other, and therefore, we use it to live our life as at its best. Choosing how to use time is not always easy. Because there are so many things out there staring us in our faces. There are so many options, so many possibilities. A certain percent of that goes toward taking care of things and activities. A percent goes toward taking care of people and relationships. Unfortunately, it's easy to spend all of our time on activities and things rather than on people. God gives us the freedom to choose how we spend our time. We can waste it. We can misuse it. We can abuse it or we can use it to accomplish God's purpose in our lives. Every single day is a gift. That's why we call it the present. When someone gives you a present, it's yours to enjoy and to appreciate and to use. St. Paul writes in Ephesians 5.15, Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Since time is a gift, we want to use it to make a difference in the lives of others, to make this world a better place to live. We want to use our time to give to God, to give to our neighbors, to our families, to our friends, and ourselves. The psalmist said as long as he had life and breath, he would use his time to praise the Lord. The writer of Ecclesiastes reminds us there's a time for everything. And a season for every activity under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to be silent and a time to speak. We all receive the same amount of time. We have much to do. We have the responsibility to budget our time wisely. It's, it's kind of like giving an allowance to your children. If they see something they'd like to buy, and it costs more than what their allowance is, then they have to do something to figure out how they're going to get that item. That's what budgeting is. They budget their money in the same way we budget our time to accomplish the most good. If I spend all my time on the internet, on Facebook, on my cell phone, then I have no time for my family or friends or for getting things done that really need to be done. Make a list of the most important people in your life. Make a list of the most important things that you need to get done. Things that have to be taken care of. People who need your attention, your love, your care. Then list the optional things, the things that aren't quite as important, things that you would like to do. One of the secrets is to choose the priorities and set the goals that you want, such as your worship life, your spiritual life, your family life, your work life, your recreational life. If we don't have any direction as to where we're going, then we are like a ship without a rudder, not going any particular direction. We lose lots of time that way. We waste a lot of time. We'll be disorganized. Do you ever wonder where all that time goes? 
Have you ever noticed how easy it is to waste time? I can find all kinds of reasons to waste time for not doing the things I really should be doing. I can be so easily sidetracked by insignificant little things. I can always find a reason for putting off the phone call for another time. I always have good intentions about sending a card or a note or a letter or an email to someone, but there are other things that seem to take higher priority. Perhaps we're afraid to say no. We don't want to hurt someone's feelings, so we take on too much. We do everything we can and then we complain that we don't have enough time. Maybe we feel we have to be accessible 24 hours a day to our families and our friends. By the way, you don't have to be accessible 24 hours a day. We're busier than God intended us to be. Remember Mary and Martha? Mary was the one who took the time to sit at Jesus' feet. She listened to his teaching. Martha was the one who was preoccupied with all the things that she had to do, things that she had to take care of the work she had in front of her. There are many times that Jesus would just love to have us come and sit at his feet and learn from him. To have his grace and his mercy exposed to us. But we're distracted by things to do. Maybe even important things, but they're still not as important as Jesus. One of the best ways to reclaim time, I believe, is to turn off the TV set for at least an hour or two. When I was a kid, I remember watching three or four shows per week. That's all my mom and dad watched, too. My mom actually a lot less than that. Dad watched a half hour of news each day. Other than that, the television was off. How much is the television on at your house, or what screen do you watch? How would your life change if you watched it less? Some years ago, I gave up on the NFL. <laughs> this year proved me right in that. I find my Sunday afternoons are so nice and long and I can get so much done when I don't spend three hours watching a football game. Maybe we need to take a look at all the commitments we've made. If God were making your appointments, what would he put in your schedule? Would he schedule you going from morning to night nonstop? Would he include some free time in there? Would he take, would he take out your, your schedule and make it his? What are some things he might add to your schedule? Jesus knows that because of our sin, we have trouble establishing priorities. Yes, we know that we should have priorities and what they should be, but somehow it doesn't seem to happen that way. In fact, we can't make it happen that way. That's exactly why God sent Jesus. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Having received his forgiveness, we have the power to set our priorities straight. Every new day is a gift from God, and when we fail to use our gift, we repent of our failures, and we are covered with the blood of Christ and his forgiveness, and we forgive ourselves as he has forgiven us. Then we start all over again. The next hour or the next day, when we start with his power and his strength, knowing that he'll be there every step of the way, he'll be our companion, our guide, our friend, each day along the way. Jesus understands. He had the same problems that we do. His days were so crowded that sometimes there was no time for himself. People would anticipate where he was about to go and they would try to get there ahead of him. So they'd be there when he arrived. They would have more demands and more needs and expectations to be met. He often didn't have time for himself. Sometimes the disciples and Jesus were so bombarded with people that they didn't even have time to eat. Their schedule was that busy. Jesus once said to his disciples, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place to get some rest. So they went away to a quiet place in a boat by themselves. Not to just get away from it all, but to get some spiritual rest. Rest that comes from God himself. Rest that comes through prayer. 
Rest that comes through reflecting on him and his mercy and his grace for us. To the crowds, Jesus said, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Not just a chance to get away from it all, but true rest that refreshes, that encourages, that comes from Jesus. In the third commandment, God commands us to set aside time for rest, for spiritual rest, a Sabbath rest. When we find rest in his word and sacraments, then we're renewed and we're strengthened to serve him and those around us. He's the one who brings true rest to our lives from all the hectic times and all the hassle going on. He's the one who offers his grace and mercy to every single time in our lives so that we're not so stretched, so bent out of shape. Even when we're so busy that we don't have time for him, he always has time for us. He's never tired, never exhausted. He never slumbers or sleeps. In fact, God gives us his very self as he gave himself for us on the cross. He gives us strength and courage for every day. He gives us hope to take on all the things ahead of us and energy for every task along the way. Some of us are old enough to remember when Sunday literally was a day of rest. People only did work that was absolutely necessary. Businesses were closed. It's not that way anymore. You can do anything on a Sunday now. In fact, we've become so busy that we use Sunday to do all our chores. We go grocery shopping and we finish homework and housework and we actually sometimes get exhausted on Sunday, don't we? Life at its best begins with God and finding our rest in Him. Sometimes we become so desperate for success and materialism that we feel, almost feel guilty even taking a little time off to rest. We've forgotten about God's design for the Sabbath day. He gives us permission. The permission we need to stop to restore our souls, to be renewed by the grace of God, and to find our rest in Him. Jesus died for all of our sins, including our mismanagement of time. The psalmist said, My time are in your hands. If they were in our own hands, we'd all be in trouble. But fortunately, our times are in God's hands. Sometimes we go through difficult times, but we can say along with St. Paul, I'm convinced that neither death nor life Neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Knowing that our Savior is always there for us, that he loves us, that he cares for us, that he guides us, enables us to say that we trust in him, that we can say, yes, Lord. My times are in your hands. Amen. We confess our faith with the Apostles' Creed. Please stand as we say it together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, Heavenly Father, you desire not the death of a sinner, but that all would repent and believe the gospel. In the epiphany of your Son, your time of salvation and your kingdom have come near. As this world passes away, give faithfulness and urgency to your church to proclaim the gospel of our God to all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. 
Lord of the harvest, as you called Peter, Andrew, James, and John to follow you and made them fishers of men, so send faithful preachers of your gospel in our time. Increase the spirit of generosity to all who support missionaries, seminaries, colleges, and other institutions of our church for the spread of the gospel and the service of God's people. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Eternal Lord, in view of every current distress as the present form of this world passes away, give constancy and contentment to your people in their God-given stations. Give comfort and faithfulness to the married and strengthen them to pass on the faith to the next generation. Show kindness also to the unmarried and assure them of the holiness of their place in life, that they would be free from anxiety and attend to holiness in body and spirit, undividedly devoted to you, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. <coughs> Almighty God, preserve our nation with its rulers. Call to repentance those who have forgotten you. Spare our president and our governor and all who serve for the good of this people. Do not let disaster befall us, but preserve us in peace and quietness. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, Hear our, our prayers. prayers. Merciful Father, turn us from every distracting anxiety and the dealings of this world that would draw our hearts away from your blessed gospel and its end, eternal life. Give us confidence in the resurrection and peace of a clean conscience by the forgiveness of sins in Jesus' name. Graciously behold those for whom we pray. We name them now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayers. prayers. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father. For the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
Uh, this is Zion Lutheran Church in Pine City, Minnesota, 410 Main Street South. Our phone number here is 320-629-3683. Please give us a call if you have any questions or concerns. Um, our worship times are at 8 o'clock Sunday morning and 7 o'clock Wednesday evening. This is the, the Wednesday evening service, uh, and uh, it's a, a nice uh, alternative to the Sunday morning service. Um, this, uh, this coming uh, Sunday, we will be starting a new uh, adult uh, Bible class on the book of Philippians. I think we will. I'll talk my elders into it. Um, also, we're having a midweek study, which starts tomorrow night. Uh, and that's going to be on the, the end times, which is a, a topic that we started looking at in our Advent series uh, back a month ago or so. Uh, and we're going to look at it uh, in a lot more depth uh, with uh, four Bible study sessions over the next four Thursdays here at Zion at 7 o'clock in the evening. Uh, also, one thing you might want to put on your calendar is there is a voters meeting. Uh, we're used to having voters meeting on Sundays after worship, but we're not doing that anymore because I leave after worship. So the, the voters meeting will be next Monday. Uh, the 22nd at 7 o'clock in the evening. Uh, so uh, hopefully uh, you can make it to that and, and uh, we can uh, continue the work of the church. It is the annual meeting, so there will be reports from the various groups of the church on how things are going for all of our work. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.